Hi there, I'm Rev. And I'm Sam, and welcome to What You Ought To Do. We are currently going around America's Great Loop aboard the Here's To Us. It's a 6,000 mile journey around the eastern half of the United States, and we are 4,000 miles completed, Whoa. about 2,000 miles to go. <laughs> well, if this is the first time you're seeing our channel, we invite you to subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified every time we put out a new video. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Today we are moving from our anchorage off of St. James City, York Island, where we stayed for the last two days, two nights of 2019. <laughs> yeah, in our last video we showed you the last sunset of 2019. So we thought we'd show you the very first sunrise of 2020. Yeah, kind of looks like the same sun that we saw go down, <laughs> coming back up. Anyway, it was a short journey from our anchorage into Cape Harbor Marina and Cape Coral. But it was a slow journey, and uh, we're going to take you on that journey and also show you kind of the highlights of our month's stay in Cape Coral. Yeah, this ended up being a really good anchorage for us. All of the other boats left. I guess they had big New Year's Eve plans somewhere else, but we stayed here. We saw the New Year in and then got to greet the sun early the next morning. Yeah, and so at first light we got up and uh, we were on our way to Cape Coral, excited to be bedding down for a whole month and we had stayed at this marina before about three years ago. Good morning from What You Ought To Do. We anchored two nights here and I just kind of wanted to point out something to you is this is a beautiful anchorage. We are in about nine feet of water and unfortunately though we had some crab pots to contend with as we came in here <clears throat> and I think they've laid some down maybe in the two days that we were here. When we got here, we knew that this was going to be a good anchorage for a north wind, which was the predominant weather pattern that we had. But when we first came in, we had a south wind. So I want to kind of point out to you our anchor track here. You can kind of see our breadcrumbs. When we first anchored, the boat was here. Here's where we dropped our anchor. And you can kind of see we had this southerly wind that gave us the upside down smile as it looks here or a frown okay so the boat was pointing this way and was swinging that way and as the weather pattern changed it all it changed overnight we could kind of feel it uh, the anchor was kind of coming over this way this way and then it, the winds came from the west then finally they shifted around the to the north moved? No, not the anchor moved, the boat moved, oh. okay? The anchor track came this way, and now the winds coming from the north had this big smile. So we were very secure. We hardly moved at all. There was hardly any forward aft movement here, and we stayed within our circle, as Reb calls it, the circle of trust. Uh, we also had a uh, anchor alarm on our phone, which is called Anchor Light, the free version of that, and we experimented with that. However, this is a lot more accurate because it does draw the circle here. All right, that's it. A little bit about anchoring here. York Island off of St. James City in Florida. Now we're going to get ready to go into our marina for a month. And as we depart that anchorage, like I said, it's about a nine-mile journey. And part of it is very slow. It's called the Miserable Mile. We're making way now at a pretty good pace here, but uh, we are going to be slowing down. And it is a very narrow channel. This is the first day of 2020. And we can see some you dolphins see out there. Dolphin. Yeah. yeah, we saw quite a few dolphins as we were going on our way to Cape Coral. And um, more than I thought we would see. Of course, did I have the camera ready? No. No, but look what's coming. <laughs> yeah. I see this big boat. And you can see how narrow that channel is. And it's actually a little narrower than uh, what those markers are. You have to stay in the channel. This guy is coming, and he is not slowing down. 
He's doing probably at least 18. He's not and moving here, over yeah, either. He's not moving over. We can't move over. And here it comes. Brace yourself. I told Reb, brace yourself. Look at yeah. that wake. Look at that wake. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, gave us a little bit of a, hey, uh, happy new year to you, too. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, the guy, even though he had a big boat, he did not have AIS. And uh, I was trying to get the boat under control, so I couldn't turn around to see the name on the boat. But uh, we were not going to let it ruin our day. That is so true. Love seeing those birds hanging out on the shoal. And um, but really, there wasn't a lot of traffic. That really was the biggest wake we've yeah. ever received. And that's a, uh, yeah. uh, an example of what not to do right. if you're operating a big boat. But the rest of the day was pretty much like this. You saw yeah. the sailboat guy wave to us. Mm -hmm. and Because you know, we were doing a nice, respectable <laughs> nine Right, miles we did an hour. wake him. Yeah. And, you know, we saw several other little boats out here in the channel but it really there's water all around but you have to stay in the channel because it's uh you know shallow in a lot of areas just outside those markers and they name this the miserable mile because i guess it's slow for the most part I didn't really see anything miserable about it. Well, uh, not that day. Not that but day. But over on the left, you see those two towers standing. That's the marina that we're heading toward. And so it was exciting kind of seeing it there in the distance. Um, but just a perfect day to, to move the boat and travel. It is the southern end of the intracoastal waterway and now we are turning off the intracoastal waterway and I'll talk to you a little bit later about how the markers change but here we go I was helping you out turning on the bow yeah. and stern thrusters made this uh, turn manually but I put the bow and stern thruster on because uh, we are starting to come into uh, an area here where we are going to have to maneuver and those are always nice to have as a little help yeah, there were signs all around saying, watch out for manatees, so we, we did slow it down quite a bit. Straight ahead, you can see the Weston and uh, Tarpon Point Marina, where it's a good place to uh, pump out and fuel up, and also a great place to stay as well. Our marina is off to the left, and we are going to have to maneuver this very narrow channel in here, and you really want to be slow as well because this is a manatee zone. We have not seen any manatees yet. Yeah, the um, channel though, as we've been saying, is narrow and it was more narrow and we just had to kind of go back into this channel um, on our way to Cape Harbor. Yeah, now this is kind of a time lapse as we come up here on Rum Runners where uh, we met yeah. Gary and Donna, very Neat new friends that we made here. They, and they took, came us and took us to dinner. Took us to dinner at Rum Runners. We got to know them, and uh, hopefully we'll see them down the line. But as we come along here, you'll see there's a boat operation to the right where they're putting boats in and out of the water. And then up ahead is a lock, and that lock is an environmental lock. Uh, I don't know exactly why. I've read a little bit about it, but uh, there was some controversy on whether the lock needs to stay there or not. But well, I love that lock, and you know I'm not a big fan of locks. We only went up or down, what, six inches, ten inches? Yeah. It couldn't have been much. Mm -hmm. But it helped us when we did get into Cape, Cor Cape Harbor. Um, we were tied up to a wall, but we never had to adjust the lines, and that's the advantage of having that Yeah, it's lock. beautiful, beautiful really, marina. Really, really nice marina. Those boats with the red stripes on them, those are called Krogan Express. Uh, kind of a rare bird. I'd never seen them before, and there was two of them sitting there. Well, our friends Joe and Cindy came to visit us from Texas, and that was just really exciting. We went out in the boat, we anchored, and had lunch, and just a really good time. Oh, got a little uh, visit from our pelican friend there. I guess he wanted to uh, get a snack. Um, he didn't really like those crackers we threw out yeah. at him, though. <laughs> yeah, and, here we come back in. Oh, again. yeah. We saw more dolphins when Joe and Cindy were with us than we ever have. So yeah. I think they were good luck for us. 
Went out to the Cape Coral Yacht Club and ate at this fabulous place called the Boat House in Fort Myers. Yeah, we highly recommend it. It's all outside seating. Well, it wasn't seating. really in Fort Myers. It was in Cape Coral. Yeah, okay. What am I saying? I yeah. don't know. We, it was outside seating, and you could sit up there on the patio at the bar or down on the beach. Yeah, but, had a great waitress yeah. by the name of Stephanie. <laughs> Took care Our of us. Our friends there. Live music. I mean, how cool is that? Oh, also in Cape Coral, there's uh, these burrowing owls. We have never heard of this before, but in several areas, they have, you know, they put these PVC pipes up so you'll know, I guess, where they are. And, and those little, little perch. wood perch, yeah. right? And um, they are protected, so you can't mess with them or you'll be in big trouble. If you know about the burrowing owls, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> it was very cool to see. Then we went up to Burnt Storm Arena. Yeah, um, saw some near friends Punta of ours. Gorda, you know, just south of Punta Gorda, some friends of ours. Uh, Jerry had us and up Debbie. There, Jerry right. and Debbie from uh, Whiskey Business. and uh, The most beautiful sunset oh, yeah, you could absolutely. imagine. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I guess it's uh, this time of the year as the sun passes through this inlet, uh, they have a little conch out there and they have the conch shells and yeah, people what, blow on the conch shells. What's the deal with that? And, uh, Never seen that yeah, before. I don't know. Uh, oh, I guess we did when we visited Key West yeah. one time. Mm -hmm. But the sunset just kept getting more beautiful and more beautiful. And just when you think it couldn't get more beautiful, it did. Okay, so uh, we are out in the water today taking a little side trip because my mom's here. Say hello, Mama. Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's great fun. We've had a wonderful day. <laughs> and uh, Mama's the reason we have a YouTube channel anyway, so she would always could be able to see us and uh, know what we're doing. Captain is back there hard at work. So, you got anything to say, Captain? Yeah, we uh, anchored today in a little anchorage down near Sanibel Island called Ding Darling. And we're heading back now and we're making 17 knots while we can because Woo! it's going to get congested up here. Really crowded. It was very congested coming out as you saw in the video. So, uh, we're going to head back to Tarpon Point Marina and pump out and then go through the lock. Do they really need to know those gory details? <laughs> <laughs> we will uh, go through the lock and then get back into our berth at Cape Harbor Marina. All right, here we are on a portion of the miserable mile going back into Cape Harbor. And you can see everybody slowed down considerably. And it is going to get busy. It's a no wake zone because of manatees. And we're back at uh, about 900 RPM. Just kind of tooling around here at about eight miles per hour. No wake. It's a little bit of wake that the here's to us will have so we'll notice that the red markers are on the left and the green is on the right well you might say hey I thought it was red right returning well that's because we're still on the intracoastal waterway and on the intracoastal waterway think of it about going around the United States in a counterclockwise manner the red is always on the land side, and so we are technically at the end of the Intracoastal Waterway. If we stay on this and keep going, we will go across Lake Okeechobee and go to the Atlantic. So as we come up ahead and we start to maneuver into our marina or uh, pump out at Point Tarpon, we will see that the markers are going to change, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that further when we get up here. But it's a very confusing area and there have been a lot of boats that have run aground because of it. All right, we are going to depart the intracoastal waterway. We're at marker 92 here and the red is on the left. And so I've disengaged the autopilot because we got this big turn to make. And while you could probably do it on autopilot, I don't want to. So what we're going to do here is now the red right returning takes place or comes into effect and we'll see that as we come up here as I have a boat coming out and 
And so we will stay, just like driving a car, we're going to stay on the right side of the road as this guy comes out here. And now, red right returning is in effect because we're off of the intracoastal waterway. So a lot of people, as they come through this section here, and we just saw one, a pontoon boat cut across, probably with a pontoon boat, no harm, no foul, but people will get confused and they'll get on the wrong side of the markers. It's an easy thing to do. So you just have to cross check yourself. So as we now follow our track, we can see the red triangles are on the right. And I can see one far up ahead. So I'm going to put that red triangle on the right because now it's red right returning. All right, a little bit about navigation and knowing where you are, knowing which side of the markers you need to be on. It's important. Well, here we are, <laughs> back ready to dock, and guess what? There's a boat in our slip. Yeah, some 28-foot or, I don't know, 30-foot Sea Ray just decided, hey, this looks like a good spot to <laughs> have a good spot. Uh, lunch and tie up. So yeah. we had to do a number of things. Uh, the marina was closed, but we did get a message to them. Yeah, or not. Um, a, a gold looper there had already called the marina, so they moved that boat and we went right in. It was uh, great. We had a dock tails there um, early, and then we had another dock tails. Yeah, bigger dock tails when it was 37 yeah. degrees oh, and everybody goodness. was on the boat. Florida decided to mm -hmm. declare winter when we were there. Hey, there's Scott and, oh, our new friends, and there's Colette. And they got us these hats that we're wearing today. <laughs> but we piled everybody on, on the here's to us because it was way too cold outside. Yeah, it was outside. way too cold outside. Yeah. So. And then um, since we were in the Fort Myers area, we decided to attend the Looper Palooza. That also meant we had to set an alarm for the first time in a very long time and get up early. The scenery was worth it, though, you have to admit. Uh, what a beautiful sky, a beautiful yeah. sunrise there. It's a drive over to Fort Myers across the bridge. Kim Russo, the director of the American Great Loop Cruisers Association. Yes, and at the Looper Crawl, we had a chance to meet a lot of subscribers. That's Celeste. and um, Richard and Susan, yeah, new uh, people that we met and treated us to dinner. And then a doc ba gels. Balahula. Yeah. Follow party and, and uh, another reunion party yeah reunion party <laughs> and uh, another sunset yeah beautiful place so we have had a really good month here in cape harbor in cape coral florida but it's time to move on That's so right. we will be moving on hey well thanks for coming along on this journey well it was actually a stay here but a lot of things happened and we are going to be moving on because it's going to be Rev's birthday soon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the other thing is, is that you can go to our website and there is also an accompanying blog that Rev does a really great job doing. And Thank has you. Uh, a lot more pictures and information and I think you'll find that interesting. And one other new thing is we have is a ship store yeah. where we have a line of t-shirts that Rev has created. And so <laughs> That's if like you're a inclined, little commercial. Yeah, so no. if you're inclined to do that, uh, uh, go ahead. <laughs> See you soon on the Here's to Us. Bye.